Hello and welcome back. We are talking about section 7.3, optimizing functions of two variables. So this second video, we're going to tackle basically the other half of this learning objective. We're going to try to classify relative extrema, that is, decide whether one is a max, a min, etc. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll check that off. And we'll say we're going to examine applied probability, pro uh, applied problems as well for optimization. But let's get back on track, figure out where we're starting. So we had just talked about what it means to be a critical point for a function of two variables. And what that gave us was a way to find where a max, a min might occur, but we never actually figured out which uh, a method that would actually tell us that besides trying to look at the picture, look at the graph of the surface and figure it out. So, well, you're welcome. <laughs> Here is our second partials test. So if you recall from our functions of one variable optimization, the, the second derivative test was a way to say, uh, look at the concavity of this function, and from that come up with a way to tell whether a, a critical point corresponded to a maximum or a minimum based on essentially which direction this, this uh, function opened. So the second partials test is a way to make that happen too, but just like with the one variable situation where we end up with two different ways that you can take the derivative of this function, <laughs> there were four different ways that we could take the second derivative of this function. Now, fortunately, uh, two of these ways turned out to be the same. f sub x, y and f sub y, x were great for the types of uh, uh, second continuous, se uh, second uh, differentiable functions that we're gonna be dealing with. So that's nice. So really there's three things to calculate, but it definitely still complicates things. With the second derivative test, the function of one variable, all you cared about was, is f double prime positive or negative? And it turns out we kind of want that to be the same scenario here, but the, the f double prime scenario is complicated. And so instead we've got this kind of, uh, we're calling it a D thing. We're calling it its own function, essentially. This is D for discriminant, in case you're curious about that. This comes from a, a, a matrix calculation, which we are fortunately sparing everyone who's watching this video from having to compute. So this is the discriminant of a particular, or a determinant of a particular matrix that is of interest to us. Um, and uh, so here's our second partial setup. So here we are. Uh, the step-by-step the, the -step process is find the critical points, take these critical points and dump them into this function. So kind of implied in step two is that we've already figured out what is f double x, f double y, and f x y. So we're gonna uh, test out each of these points. And basically uh, we have a, a, a two case scenario, two plus case scenario. If the thing we come up with, if this determinant is uh, negative, we're done. It's a saddle point, so it's neither a max nor a min, basically. If, on the other hand, this determinant thing is positive, then we've kind of got to check one more thing. The double x, it really doesn't matter who we check. This could be, or, or uh, f, y, y, it really shouldn't matter. Um, but just in the interest of giving you a concrete test to run, we, we say check the x's. So if the double x's, the f sub x, x is positive, congratulations, you've found yourself a relative minimum. This is the analogous case where we say, oh look, the second derivative is positive, so the, the, it's kind of an upward opening parabola at that spot, so this point down at the bottom must be a uh, minimum. And then the other scenario there, uh, fxx is negative, so the graph curves down at that point, so any critical point uh, right there must be a maximum instead. And then the case we always try to avoid, but if this uh, DE thing is zero, then basically, sorry, no information, and you gotta try something else. So again, just speaking as, my, as myself, as an instructor, I, I try to avoid this scenario unless uh, the question is really just testing, do you understand what happens when, when this goes on? Because really, there isn't a lot of uh, great information at that point. You, you take that and you say, look at the graph or do something else, and. That's, that's kind of a hard situation to put students in, in any event. So mostly, for me at least, it breaks down to either the saddle point case or these relative max min cases, and we'll try to avoid hitting zero for that D calculation. So before we try a word problem out with this, because I know how much everyone loves those, um, let's just revisit our first example real quickly and, and remind ourselves uh, what this would look like for 
um, for that first function. So just to revisit this, uh, we'll, I'll scan back to our first example so that we can see uh, what we're actually dealing with. So there's our original function. So this is the example one function. So x, y plus four over x plus two over y. We're gonna just, just so we can revisit one we've already looked at, we're gonna take this and we already calculated the f sub x. So let's revisit those because we did this when we were trying to figure out critical points. So our f sub x looked like this y minus four x squared thing. f sub y looked like this guy. So uh, as we go back and revisit this, uh, when we think about our second partials, we're going to just put a little reminder on here. Hey, by the way, just so you remember, this was the f sub x thing we already calculated. So we're trying to you know, stand on our earlier work on our own shoulders, as it were. Um, so f sub x x means start with f sub x, which was this, and then take its derivative again. Remember, this symbol just means uh, I, it is a set of instructions that says take the derivative of whoever's to the right of me. So if we do that, x is the input variable again, so this y thing would be zero. And then this is just some power rule. We'd have x to the negative two, so power rule would make that power get even more negative. We'd be down to x to the, the, the third in the denominator. And since there was a negative two exponent on this guy, we'd have an extra factor of two. So we went from four to eight. So there's f sub x, x, f sub y, y. Well, again, just to reiterate, this starting point was f sub y. Um, we were building this, uh, we already did this calculation back in our first example from the previous video, so this is our starting point for fyy. fyy says start with the y derivative thing and take its derivative one more time with y as the input. So again, derivative of x in this scenario is zero because there's no y's there, minus the derivative of this guy using some uh, power rule. I just realized I've been very gender biased here. I keep referring to these as guys, so this could be gal. I want to be egalitarian here. So this gal is y squared, uh, technically y to the negative two for power rule. So the negative two would come down, we get a positive four for our factor, and then our exponent would get a little more negative. So we'd be down to y to the third. And then finally, the, the weirdest one, the so-called mixed partial. Uh, so it doesn't matter which direction you do. This particular one is being structured as uh, um, f sub x, y, but this works like this as well. So either answer will give you the same one. So this is technically starting with uh, f sub y and then taking its derivative with respect to x. So this is starting with f sub y in here. Again, that should look the same as this, this one over here. Uh, so huh, here's our f sub y. This is, again, this is the one that trips people up because you're starting with something that's the derivative with respect to y. This is where I want to sort of use my, my little, you know, men in black brain eraser thing and just forget that this came from a y derivative at all. This is just some expression floating in the middle of parentheses here. And it's our job now to take the derivative with respect to x of the thing inside of the parentheses. So the fact that it came from a y derivative is actually irrelevant at this point. So once that calculation's over, we try to purge that from our brain. Um, taking the derivative of this with respect to x though, would say, okay, derivative of x is one. Derivative of all this is zero. It has no x's in it. So the derivative of this whole deal with respect to x is just one. So if you're feeling spry and you wanna do this the other way around, you could do the f sub x y version where you start with this thing, the f sub x, and take its derivative with respect to y. But, spoiler alert, you get the same answer. Derivative of this thing in parentheses with y is the input variable. Derivative of this would be one. Derivative of this would be zero, so we get one back again. So, no surprises there. Oh my gosh, it's been so long, I don't even remember why we were doing this. We wanted to figure out this determinant thing, this d, which looks like the f sub xx times the f sub y y, and then minus the square of this mixed partial. So the, the thing we were supposed to do is take any critical points we got. Again, back in example one, we were told that a critical, well, no, we weren't told. We figured it out that, that a critical point uh, existed at two comma one. So in order to classify that critical point, in order to figure out if, if, if she is a max, a min, or neither, we're taking that, that point two comma one and we're plugging it into each of these expressions. So the thing I wanna keep track of is f sub x x is this thing right here. If we plug in two for all of the x's and one for all the y's, we're gonna get some concrete number out of this. 
So let's track these things down and I'll see if I can change colors up a little bit here. So here is our eight over X cubed bit. That is this evaluated at x equals two. Now, we're, it's not cheating, we, but there's no places to put the y, so we don't really care about the ones. Really, we only have to care about the x's for this particular expression. There's only an x in it, so that's all we can plug in. So we plug in the two for, for the x value, ignore the y because it's not part of that expression, f sub xx is done. So then we're supposed to take the f sub y y thing and plug in two comma one, that is this expression with two one plugged in and that corresponds to this fine looking fraction there. So we're supposed to take four over y cubed. Again, now x's don't exist in this expression. So the two is kind of irrelevant for this particular calculation. The one goes in, uh, it gets cubed, fantastic. F sub x, y is even easier. I will, I will circle stuff so it, I can be consistent. Magenta is this. Not the Rocky Horror Picture Show character, but here we go. One, so all we did was replace f sub x, y with one, great. We didn't have to plug anything in. Technically, we're supposed to plug in two for all the x's and one for all the y's, but there were no x's or y's. So this is some number and that's great, we're gonna go on. I do wanna mention one common misconception that, that students come out of this with. There's no particular reason that this f sub x, x thing, that its answer, has to have x's in it. It's kind of more likely in the grand scheme because if there are polynomials with y, they get derivatives taken, they're gonna disappear probably. But So it's more likely that this thing will have x's and that f sub y, y will, will have y's, but there's no particular reason why this can't have y stuff in it and this one can't have x stuff in it. So really, we do have to pay attention to whatever this point is we're plugging in. Plug it in with fidelity for each of those, the, the presence of each of those variables, regardless of whether the derivative was taken with y's or x's. Okay, disclaimer out of the way. So this apparently is all equal to three when we simplify stuff. So this is eight over eight. Okay, that's one. This is four over one. So, so these things multiplied together. One times four is four. We take away one. Sure enough, we're at three. Now, the only thing I really care about for this is the fact that it's positive. I mean, three is a perfectly good number, don't get me wrong, but the main thing I care about is that this number is greater than zero, which puts us into the scenario where we're looking at either a max or a min. So if it was negative, we'd be uh, over, <laughs> our, our job would be done, because if this expression is negative, then it's uh, two comma one corresponds to a saddle point, and that's it. So we're in the slightly more complex scenario because mathematicians are mean people, no, because we want to make sure we cover all of our bases. Uh, so in the positive determinant scenario, uh, f sub x, x at this point was positive. Um, so remember, uh, basically we just compared this blue thing because what happens is blue and green here, f sub x, x and f sub y, y, those things getting multiplied together, if they are the same sign, that is they're both positive or they're both negative, that's going to make the only scenario where this uh, end result is positive. Because if you think, if these were different, one was negative, one was positive, and then you take away something else uh, that's guaranteed to be positive, you're never gonna have a chance at a positive number for an answer. So these guys will either both be positive or both be negative in this greater than zero situation. So that's, that's why I say, I don't, I don't really care if you check f sub xx or f sub yy in this scenario. They're both either gonna be positive or both negative. So get the same information. In any event, f sub xx was eight over two cubed, one, that's a positive number, so, so we might, might as well write this down. Uh, the thing we would compute here is that this answer is equal to one, which is certainly greater than zero. And so our conclusion is that um, we end up with uh, a, a relative minimum at that point. Okay, we're gonna come back in the next video and we'll do a word problem to kind of put all this stuff together.